which is the book launch of Paresh Meti World of Colors by Sushma K. Bal. On stage, we also have Anita Chowdhury, the ambassador for the Stellar International Art Foundation. And to release the book, we have the Grammy Award winner, Padmashri Vishwa Mohan Bahat. I'll now invite him to the podium. Please give them all a very warm round of applause. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. I am very, very happy that Sushma ji and Paresh ji have chosen me for the inauguration of this wonderful, wonderful, and I must say the heavy book, heaviest book I have seen in my life, maybe weighing about 10 kg or something. And uh, this is a, one of the most beautiful creation I have seen in my life of somebody like Paresh Ji Mehti, who has done a great job, though I don't have any authority to comment on any painting, but what I saw the book, when I saw the book, the whole book, says his long journey of 25 years, uh, that shows how hard work he has done all the life. And this is something memorable that Sushma Ji Sushma Bahalji has uh, taken out this uh, great job uh, for all of us that we could see a great artist and his creation of painting. We are Rajasthani and they have told me just to sing one line. Since I am not a vocalist, you already know I am a instrumentalist, Mohan Veena is my instrument, but still I would say one song, one line from Chapur to all the guests. For a rebub they then over here. The famous mand, Kesariya Balam. To Kesariya Thank you, Vishwamohan ji. You said you're an instrumentalist. I don't believe it. I think he's also such a wonderful singer. singer. I yes, think it's yes. great, great. Yeah, really, really. Let's give him a big clap. Yes. I think it's so wonderful that one artist who works in music, is a musician, is launching a book by another artist who's a painter and a sculptor. I think arts in India have through generations and through centuries and eras been interconnected. And I think this is a very good example of that interconnection. The two mediums and the different mediums drawing from each other. And the fact that we have a Rajasthani musician doing us the honor adds to the pleasure. So I'm really, really happy and I thank you very much for making the time of being here and launching the book. Thank you. Well, both of you are doing amazing work, which is winning global, you know, 
credit. Thank you very much, Susma Ji. Yes, and you know, your clothes are Hello. just telling everybody that you are an artist. I don't have to tell them. <laughs> all, that, all that glitter is not gold, <laughs> by the way, don't well, worry. We have to start at the right point, okay? So, it just adds to the joy of having both of you together on this platform today. So, I must thank you, Panditji, and thank you, thank Paresh, you. for being here and for doing this, uh, giving us this opportunity and for giving me the opportunity to write about your work and to you uh, also for publishing it, bringing it to everybody's attention and uh, for them to read and enjoy and share. Well, it's a limited edition book. It's very generously illustrated. And as Vishu Mohanji has said, it's very, very, very heavy. So, just to show you how heavy this book titled Paresh Maiti, A World of Colors is, which is about the man and his art, let's just get it launched by you, you know, while we are here together. Wow, yeah. I think I can't hold it. You can't. Let me. <laughs> Jaipur Marvel, don't worry. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes. I saw a painting when he was only 13 years old and he started the beautiful, the best I liked when you were 13 years old. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Paresh is a multi-talented artist. He's a man of many, many parts. A painter, a sculptor and a designer. This book is designed by him. Installation. Photographer filmmaker and an installation artist, all rolled into one. Well, what makes this book published by Stellar International Art Foundation about an already very well-known, highly collected, extensively written about artist stand apart, I wonder, and I'm sure you might ask as well. I think there are some special features which I'd like to share with you. Which, are, which in my view make it distinct. Firstly, it represents Paresh's work held in a single collection. Everything in this book is, belongs to the Stellar International Art Foundation. So it's not work that's been spread all over, it is collected in one single collection. Secondly, it's focus on his work acquired by one family. Anita and Sudhi Chaudhary and their, fam uh, their children have been collecting his art over the years. And I'm very happy that you're here, Anita. We'd like to hear from you how you started it all 
So once we've you know, had a little chat. And thirdly, it features the artist's creative flow in a body of work from each series. It's not that you, know, you have one work here and one work from there. It's series together featured in this book. Fourthly, the book documents the work that sits besides those by Picasso, Rorick, Matisse, Andy, Andy Warhol, besides M.S. Hussein and many others in the stellar international collection. So it's wonderful to see our artists and our Indian art being showcased internationally in, in company of such celebrated artists. As I said, the, this uh, finally designed publication has been designed by the artist himself, and he, I believe he's also designed his own uh, <laughs> costume that he's what? wearing today, but Lovely. let him speak about that a bit Lovely. later. Lovely. Yeah. It <laughs> seems providential that Stella International Art, Art Foundation and Chaudhary family, the initiators and the champions of this book, had their first encounter with Paresh around the same time that I got to know him during my years at the British Council as head for arts and culture. So that was a good coincidence. And though I have known Paresh for several decades, seen him evolve as an artist, written about him many times and his art, it was fascinating to review it again for this book and do all the research involved and connected with this significant collection. Well, I think the book represents two things. It, of course, represents the, the artist's creativity, but it also reflects the collector's fascination with his art and their bond with the artist. And writing and putting this book together took us about two years. Well, the problem was, while I was in Delhi, Anita was shuttling between UK and India, and Paresh is a globetrotter, as many of you know, so he was always on the move. <laughs> Finally, we did manage to get together and had several meetings, numerous discussions, and some formal, others informal. And we also spoke to many of his friends and family members, just to fathom the sources from where his work comes, and what his work connects with. Well, the collectors and uh, the artists met first time, maybe I will leave that to you to speak a bit later, but in the 1990s. And, you know, it's grown very firmly and strongly since then. The series featured in the book, I should just mention very briefly, includes a la large body of paintings on Venice, Kerala series, Shesh Lekha based on Tagore's poems that he had uh, created which were showcased at the National Gallery. And there are picturesque views of Varanasi and its ghats. There is oriental landscape figure, figured in the paintings, uh, figuring cherry blossoms uh, that he saw when on a visit to Japan besides mystic light of Sweden and Norway. There are about 250 paintings in the collection of the um, uh, Stellar International Art Foundation, uh, besides uh, several works in their personal collection, including a series of very amazing vintage cars that Paresh painted for the family some years ago. Now, a few more words about the artist who's hailed as the Turner of India, no less, <laughs> Turner of India. And this is because of his amazing watercolors. And he's also hailed as the Merchant of Venice because of his love for the fascination uh, for the city of uh, romance, water, water uh, colors, and of course, beauty. Well, the other good thing, interesting thing about Parish's work is that his art can be found anywhere and everywhere, be it the homes, offices, museums, public spaces, even menu cards and trophies. And he tells me that he loves uh, traveling because his work is from heart to hand 
to canvas as he travels around. Wow. Well, Parish's journey bega began as a child, helping his mother make terracotta figurines with his deft little hands. And after schooling, he did his uh, college, uh, graduation from the College of Art in Kolkata, and then Masters at Delhi. Well, you know, he's been quite lucky also, not just in finding the Chaudhary family, or the Chaudhary family finding him, but also his first assignment was for uh, four paintings for uh, Oberoi in Bangalore. Yes, yes. And the way he got this assignment was because, of course, the excellence of his work, but also because M.F. Hussein, who was first considered for that assignment, quoted a very high price. And Paresh was then asked to do it, and he did it so well that he's never had to look back since then. Well, he's a meticulous and conscientious person and a seeker and loves exploring and working in diverse media. He's done landscape, still life, narrative, abstract work. Of course, he's a master of watercolors, but also works in oils and mixed media. He works on canvas, handmade paper, and board. The art, though, his art, though, is rooted in the soil, the soil that he comes from, but it is offered, uh, also open to the worldview. That's what makes his work, you know, very accessible and pleasurable, and it extends beyond the two-dimensionality to three-dimensionality, uh, to uh, installations, films, and photography. Well, I think his compositions are also beautiful because of the colors, because of the poetics, the beauty, the joy, and the finesse and the sensuousness that they include. And they appear in a mix of impressions of the Bengal school, folklore, and contemporary reality with a touch of the classical. And those of you who would like to see the works, the book is here for you to come and see it at the end. His scale is always large. Although Paresh has done some excellent paintings in small size as well, he prefers working in large size, and his art is normally, actually he likes to be non-confrontational in his art. And I think before I invite uh, my other panelists to speak, I'll just like to read just a very short uh, excerpt from the book. There are remarkable depictions of the rivers and the waters with rickety boats that he used to travel in to go across to the other side. The flickering lantern that enabled him to study at night, the industrious ants that shared the mud floor on which he rested, and the temple bells that his mother rang while playing every morning. All these featured in his paintings and colossal landscapes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. I think we haven't finished because I must ask you both some questions. May I start with you, Anita? Yeah. I would like to ask you, what did you find so special about Parishi's work, and when did you start collecting? I think it was uh, Parish's uh, artwork and his uh, personality together which made it uh, a collectible item. We didn't stop at uh, one or two paintings. It was always, um, especially it's my husband's idea that uh, we should buy a full series. So even if there were 10 or 20 paintings in a collection, we always bought. And also it's good for the artist and he realized himself and he appreciated the fact that instead of breaking up the collection, it's better that it's homed and housed in one residence and in one foundation. And of course, as you know, that we are planning to make a museum and be able to home and let the public see uh, art, which uh, you, you, know, you don't get to see it all together, unless it's, it's a sale or it's an it's a, uh, exhibition of some sort. I think this is really good that you bought the whole series because this is one uh, great pity that artist's work gets dispersed. 
Of course, it gives pleasure to a lot more people. But when you set up the museum, it'll have uh, it'll be open and accessible to a wide audience. I think this is wonderful, really good. So we must thank you for that. You. Yeah. But also, I wonder. You know, you collected a lot of it with uh, a great deal of love and care, individual pieces, series. So, what prompted you to set up this uh, foundation and give up your so much of your personal wealth and uh, treasure into a public kind of uh, organization? I think that the, the best thing that the foundation could do was uh, to give it uh, legibility, to document all the artwork. It got uh, properly documented, uh, filed and uh, it, it also is stored properly, which is storage is a big yeah. problem. Artwork gets destroyed so quickly if you don't look after it yeah. with the weather conditions and transportation. So, of course, we had to put in a small fund which would take care of uh, all the transports, the couriers, the shipments, the insurances. So everything is insured now. And we had to do it when it is such a vast collection because the, the foundation uh, has uh, over a thousand paintings in, in its collection. Okay. Thank you. And what, you know, I mean, there are three, four other books on Pradesh, uh, which are all very, very good books. So what prompted you to do another big book? And, you know, it's quite a lot of work, expense, effort. So what prompted that? And, you know, what pleasure did it give you? I think it's, it's, uh, it starts from our uh, basic uh, fondness and appreciation of uh, Parish and his work. And uh, we love every piece of art that we own. And the best thing to do was to put it into, it's a private uh, circulation book. It's not for sale. And, um, and just to share it with people. Otherwise, it's lying in storage, some on the walls. And like this, you know, public can places and museums and professors, they can all actually have a good look at the book. Well, this is wonderful. And it's really good to have this uh, large work documented and reproduced in these excellent, uh, you know, uh, uh, paintings ex in excellent form in this book. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Paresh, you know, we want to hear you, from you, from the horse's mouth. <laughs> what, you know, what has your experience been of working on these series and working with the collection, collectors? Uh, the journey for this book started 1990, uh, quarter century back. I came to Delhi uh, to study my post-graduation, and their relative uh, has an, a very well-known art gallery in Delhi. I exhibited there. One day she took me to their farm and suddenly I saw about 30, 35 vintage cars. They were so hypnotic, I could not believe. And I said, I want to paint them. And they said, uh, Anita and her husband said, uh, will you really paint them? I said, yes. I said, every uh, Sunday when I have a holiday, I will come and paint. They asked me how much it is. I said, that you better talk to the gallery. I am the artist. I am not the businessman. And that was thousand rupees per watercolor large full seat watercolor. So the journey began with the four wheels, the car painting, which is there in the front of this book. Then I documented all the cars and the journey of their, also collection of their journey started. But to create this book, they have been telling me not last two years, years, Many years, when are you, you know, doing our book? When are you doing our book? And as usual, you know, I found much more interesting to create a painting, to create a book. I was thinking, you know, it's, you know how to waste, because 
anything I, I feel that uh, to do except my art, that is not my job. But finally, really it, it I'm very, very happy that Anita and her family uh, uh, took too much interest and we really chased them that to give us this, give us writing, not me more, it was Susmaji and uh, she was also middle of somewhere, I am God knows somewhere else, middle of the desert maybe painting. But yes, I want to know this, this painting, when did you do, where, where is, you know, all this. It was so tough and it was so difficult, but really a lot of research oriented, you know, work she has done. Thank you very much, Susmaji, and thank you very much, Anita and Stellar International Art Foundation, to put together this book. And of course, um, uh, we took a lot of time, but finally, uh, it, it came up. The problem with me, I, I believe in tortoise. So it takes time, <laughs> but it comes ultimately. Uh, I think we just have uh, time for a couple of questions, if there are any. Maybe you all know his work so well that there aren't any, but if there uh, are... Excuse me, I wanted to tell one thing, yes. that when you have mentioned that uh, my f one of my first work, yeah. that I got, uh, that M.F. Fushen, you know, couldn't yeah, get. Yeah. We were very close. Yes. I got it because of the person who is sitting here in front, that Nilam Khanna. Oh, how nice. Yes. Thank you, Nilam. Because of her. Thank you, thank you. Thank and she you. was the Oberoi's main person, okay. so she said, you know, here is this artist. Wonderful, wonderful. Really good. Good to uh, have you there. Thank you very much, Nilam. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Do we have any questions? Or none? I think straightforward. <laughs> If there is no question, I will ask some questions. Yeah. No. Okay, we have a question from the stage. <laughs> Panditji, not from very Panditji. difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you see any connection uh, in a painting and musical notes? It, is, it has a deep rooted connection. Yes. Like dood hota na, dood se paneer, paneer se makan, makan se cheese. It is all interconnected. And by the way, I listen to your music also all the time. Really? Yes. I'm very fond of your music. Oh, really? And I love instrumental, Indian instrumental classical music. Yeah. So I had no idea that uh, you will be, you know, here when I met you yesterday, I was so, my eyes were sparkling. Yesterday I could have been in Singapore because the international exhibition is there, but I said my, you know, day is done. The bridge is wow. met. Because sometimes I feel that uh, we have seven notes, musical notes, and I saw seven colors in your painting. So I think you are must you must be connected with music while you do. Do you play some music? All the time. In the background. All the time. All the time. All any time, wherever I travel. You do some painting and then and music I, goes. I, the, it, it goes. It travels with me. Yes. Yes. That is it. And always my bags are excess, excess baggage. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I think, a wonderful thing because music can give you that kind of concentration for what you are doing and it, it has the power to take you in a trance. Yeah, it, it enlightens. And enlightens enlightens the atmosphere. Our mind. The vibration. Then it comes to hand to paper yes, or the, canvas. The positivity starts uh, yes. when you have good music in background and then you do whatever creativity you want to do. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you, Panditji. Thank, you. Thank I, you very much. I think it's a very happy note to end it on. Music and visual art, they both support each other and we are very happy to have both of them here. Thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>